Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video, we're gonna be setting up Hacks, the Home Assistant Community Store, which I mentioned in my last video. Thankfully, to get this up and running, it's a piece of cake. We only need to run a single command inside our container. Now, the command we're going to run can be run on a bare metal installation or a standard virtual machine if you're running something like Home Assistant OS, but for this, we're gonna to need to exec into our container and get this up and running. So let's have a quick look at the prerequisites and then we can move on to the deployment. For the deployment, we're gonna be using the command line interface. So you can either use something like Portana or Putty or VS Code or whatever, as long as you can exec into the container. As a quick reminder, the Hacks is a community store. So these are unofficial applications. They don't receive support from Home Assistant, but from my experience of using these for a few years, I've had no problems, especially if you're using some of the more popular ones. And you can do things like sorting by the star count on GitHub, which is usually a good indication of how active a product is. For example, most of the things I use on there are the cards, so better graphs, tables, displays, etc. But there are some third party integrations with things like Nest, etc. You might need to be a little bit more careful when using third party integrations with applications that require authentication. Do make sure that you go and have a look at the code and make sure that you trust these applications. But I'll leave that up to you. For me, this provides the perfect flexibility between the official integrations, which are great and give you some level of comfort, but also gives you that flexibility to add more, which are often things that may eventually even make it into the official integrations. So if we head over to the Hacks website at hacks.xyz, let's have a look at the prerequisites just to make sure you don't fall foul of those. You're running Home Assistant version 2024.4.1, running a supported Home Assistant installation. So if you remember in the past video, have a look at that matrix to make sure you're using one that's supported. We're obviously gonna be using the container installation for this one. You have access to the file system, so that's why we need to do the exec to exec into the container. You know how to access the assistance log file. That's not technically required, it's just obviously useful if you need to debug. You're aware that there are no add-ons in Hacks, so Hacks is just the community store, basically the nuts and bolts, which are then allows you to add the community integrations. So by default, there's nothing in there, but what this will provide you with is an inbuilt browser within Home Assistant to then download community integrations. And you have a stable internet connection. Yeah, we don't need to worry about that. So if we click on the download, you'll notice that it actually uses a script and you can see that script down here. Now, originally when I first did this, there wasn't a script that's quite involved, but since then this handy script has taken away a lot of that pain. So you can do the OS or the supervised version. So I mentioned that before, this is where you might have it on a virtual machine, for example, but as we love containers, we're going to be doing the container installation. So really straightforward. And as I mentioned, we need to Docker exec into whatever you've called your container. And then we need to run this script here. This script will then pull and change all of the configuration files that you need to. You need to make sure that you reboot after that and it will require you to authorize, sorry, no, authenticate with GitHub. And I'll show that later on in the video. So now fire up your browser, your terminal of choice and exec into the container. I'm gonna be using VS Code for this. Now, whilst I've said I'm gonna be using VS Code, that's only for those people who are gonna be using the command line interface. If you wanted to, you could obviously use something like Portana because Portana has a really handy way of, you can just click on your Portana instance. If you go down to something like Home Assistant, you can then click the little console button here. I often need to change this to use shell and click connect. Now you can run that script within this interface and it should install it. But if we now exec into this container, so if we do sudo and then docker exec interactive session home assistant bash, I think I actually called mine home dash assistant. And if we hit return, I need to put my password in because we're using sudo. We're now into that container. So we've effectively SSH'd almost into a container. If you were to do things like LS, you would see all of the configuration files within the container, a bit like a virtual machine or a normal machine. So now that we're in here, we're able to execute the script. 
So let me just drag the terminal up so we can see all the output. And it should be as simple as running that wget, downloading the script, and then executing the script. So let's go and run that now and let's see what happens. So it went and pulled that, it downloaded and it unzipped it, it created the directories, it made sure that the version we have is the right one, removed the zip file and the installation was complete. Now it says remember to restart Home Assistant before you can configure it. So there's a few ways you can do that. We can obviously just jump back into Portana and restart it. We can obviously exit this container and we can do something like a sudo docker restart and then home assistant. Or any other way that you want to do it. So now that we've restarted home assistant, let's now log back into that and hopefully we've got hacks available to us. Now, in my last video, I've already got hacks running up. So this is obviously the one I've spun up for my tutorial. It's not the one I run from day to day. I had hacks here on the left. Now, I don't have that here on the left because now you actually have to install it as an add-on. So if we go to settings and we go to integrations, behind my ugly mug, there is the add integrations button. So let's click add integrations. And now if we say hacks, you can see that hacks is available here. So what do we need to do? We need to click that and we need to now install it. So I know how to access all of these things. I know that everything inside Hacks is custom and tested and up to you if you want to install the experimental features. It's probably more likely that things will break, but it does seem to suggest, or it actually says, there'll be a more seamless upgrade path to version 2.0 when it's released. So I'm gonna go with it, but if you experience bugs or whatever, you might not want to enable this feature. So now I'm gonna click Submit, and it's gonna ask me now to authenticate with GitHub. Now you might be thinking, what's going on here? Well, it's quite simple, it's just federation. So effectively, all this is doing is say, hey, just prove you're somebody and we trust GitHub to know who you are. So all you've got to do is click on this link here and enter this code. So if I click onto this link, it's going to ask me now for that code over here, AB15, AB15, and then click continue. Now I need to authorize that and congratulations, we're all set. So hopefully back in here, success, created the configuration for finish. So now Hacks is available and you can actually see it here on the left. Now, I think it's due to some browser caching or whatever, it hasn't actually loaded the little symbol, so the shop, maybe a restart will fix that, but it's not important for the demonstration of this video. So now we can click on Hacks. And as it says, Hacks doesn't actually come with anything. What Hacks is, is a way to add additional stuff. So if we click on Hacks, it should now tell you about Hacks itself and you can find out uh, some general documentation, etc. But the bit we're most interested in is if we go back. So traditionally, there used to be a Browse Integrations button down here. But the new way, I think, with the experimental features is that we just search for something up here. So, for example, if I wanted to have a look at some graphs, you can see there's a ton of different graphs here. And what's handy is it shows you the stars and the downloads. And much like anybody tries to put some trust in something, you typically go with what's the most popular and trusted. So, for example, this mini graph card, I can click on this. It will then take you to the page for that project. And you can see we've got nearly 3000 stars here. It gives you a preview of what it looks like. And if you remember in my past video, I actually use this card because I think it's really nice. So to get this working, you just simply click the download button in the bottom right. But you can also have a look through all the documentation, understand how to use it. A lot of these add-ons will require some additional tweaking in the configuration, etc. And you should be able to find that in this documentation. But if I want to download it, I just click download. That's going to go away now and download it. And then hopefully, I need to reload. That's typically the case. So now that's included. Um, you can see that's now got a blue download button there. If I close that, is there a way to see everything I've got that's just downloaded? Maybe there's a filter button. 
Ah uh, yes, downloaded. And then if I hit save, yeah, you can see everything I've got downloaded. So if we clear that filter, we then get everything in here. And so on my actual running HA, here you go. This is the actual download that we just downloaded in use. And you can see that it provides nice graphs. And even if you click on things like that, you'll still dial in to get the more traditional graph with much finer granularity. So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully by now you have everything you need to set up hacks and enhance your Home Assistant experience. There's a ton of really cool third party integrations in there that not only give you actual access to functionality but also mimic and change the front end user experience. Let me know which ones you're excited about and what you're going to use. Like I said, this Home Assistant series or more broadly Home Automation series is as much for my learning as it is for yours. So I'm really keen to see which ones I'm not using, which ones are the must-haves. So do let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, give it that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.